Hello there and welcome. This is Mikhail or Michael speaking. And as always, before this video starts, I want to say thank you all who decided to support me financially, be it through Patreon, PayPal, or Super Thanks. I really appreciate your generosity. So thank you, friends, and have a good day. Now, today's video, I will start with the Kupiansk frontline. In the last 24 hours, some news and territorial changes have occurred. So let's toggle them one by one. First, it is important to note that in the last 24 hours, Russians continued their assaults from Liman Pershy in the direction of Sinikivka, as well as from Vilshana in the direction of this road, and here in the direction of these settlements. It would seem that previously mentioned evacuation order is now in motion, and there are news coming out of evacuation of Kupiansk and nearby settlements. It is also interesting to note that reports are coming in that the Ukrainians had started to mine bridges, roads, and other logistical hubs in the close vicinity of the front line. It would seem that Russian breakthrough is still ongoing, and as of right now, Ukrainians are unable to stop it, and they are preparing for the worst scenario possible. That be, of course, if Russians would continue their swift advance, reach the city of Kupiansk, and Ukrainians will be forced to destroy some of the infrastructure to prevent Russians from, for example, crossing the rivers freely. Now to the territorial gains. There were some territory gains here near Sinikivka. News of Russians capturing this settlement has been around for about 48 hours. There are no real confirmations as far as I know. There are no videos or photos whatsoever. So I think it is safe to assume that the settlement is at least within the gray zone and the fighting is going for its control as I speak. In the last 24 hours, Russians have not stopped attacking in the direction of the settlement in attempt to take control over it. And as a result of these attacks, were able to advance this much. As you can see, this does not put Russians closer to the settlement of Sinikivka. However, it helps with the general situation as Russians are slowly evening out the front line and gradually advancing on this front. There were also some Russian territorial gains to the southeast of Kupiansk, here in this sector. Here you can see that Russians are now very close to the settlements of Katlerivka and Kislivka. And some reports suggest that the fighting for the settlements had already started. In the last 24 hours, here in this sector, Russians were able to capture a small portion of territories, which got them closer to the settlement of Katlerivka. Generally speaking, Russians are still far away from the tactical victory that the capture of Kupiansk would grant them. Fighting remains to be difficult and the Ukrainians are fighting hard, but most certainly this front line would become one of the hot spots of this war. Then from here, let's move to the city of Bakhmut and touch the northern flank of the city. As tradition implies, Ukrainian forces yet again launched several attempts at capturing settlement of Yagodne and Berhivka. However, these attacks were met with fierce resistance and soon after Russians counter attacked and as a result of that, were able to recover some of the territories here on this front. To be more specific, here near to the reservoir. So this, as you can see, was the result of successful Russian counterattack. If we zoom in slightly, we can see that Russians have regained these positions, which could be very valuable for their defense, because this location is basically a chokehold, which will help Russians defend Birhivka in the long run. Then from here, let's quickly visit the southern flank of Bakhmut. Despite all Ukrainian attempts at re-entering Klishevka from all sides, all these attacks were repelled by the Russians, as well as attacks in the direction of Andreevka. Some of the pro-Ukrainian channels claim that Russians have significantly reinforced this front, and perhaps this is why we see Ukrainian assault on this front gradually bugging down. With Russian reinforcements, it would seem Ukrainians lost their offensive capabilities. The successful Russian counterattack from Kurdumovka, which occurred a few days ago, is a great example of that. Now, it is hard to say who has the upper hand and initiative on this front, but what is safe to say that Russians are still pretty far away from a tactical defeat. From here, we go to the Zaporozhian front line, and as we can see, Syriac maps have added a second line of defense, which again can give us a great representation of what exactly is going on on the front. We will start with the Vremivka tactical bridgehead, to be more specific, with the settlement of Urojaine. 
The situation has changed since yesterday. It would seem that the second Ukrainian assault was much successful than the first, and as a result of that, they were able to capture about one third of the settlement. As you can see, Russians still control about the other third, with the rest of the settlement being in the gray zone. What didn't make the situation of the Russian forces within Urajaina better is the fact that Ukrainians are now able to launch assaults from three directions, from Staromayorsky, across the river, straight on along the road, and now through these open fields. As you can see, Russian control over these fields to the east of Urajaina had gradually decreased, and if Ukrainians will continue with their attacks here in this sector, like I said yesterday, we can expect Urajaina to be first in a gray zone and then captured by the Ukrainians. Now, Russians, of course, could counter attack here in this sector now and after Urajaina will be taken. But if we zoom in and look at the situation, we can see that Russians have a much stronger positions right behind Urajaina, which will be much easier to defend. At this point in time, I'm sure Russian forces are buying time as Ukrainians march on the open fields under the fire of Russian artillery and aviation. Then let's quickly talk about Priyutne and Novodonetsk. There were reported Ukrainian assaults in their direction as well. However, these attacks were of limited numbers, which could be the sign that these attacks are secondary in attempt to fix some of the Russian troops and keep them away from the real fighting within Urajaina Staromayorsky sector. So it should not come to a surprise that these attacks had not seen any success. Then let's move to the settlement of Arikhiv and discuss the situation around Rabotina and Verbove. In the last 24 hours, Ukrainians yet again assaulted Russian positions in front of Verbove and Rabotina, attacking along the road, as well as to the flank of the settlement. Their last attack was seven armored pieces strong. They've advanced along the road, but were spotted by Russian artillery and aviation and were fired upon. As report and the picture here suggests, they were first stopped and then mostly destroyed. After which Ukrainians had launched several attempts at advancing within these force lines, but were spotted by the Russians yet again and fired upon. Here you can see on the video, Russians firing upon these force lines. Then it's been oddly quiet around Lapkova Piatihatki settlement. Ukrainians, it would seem, had stopped their assaults yet again. They still have some of their vehicles going in and out of Piatihatki to Stepova, but generally it would seem that the Ukrainians decided to take defense within the Pietihatki settlement and are not willing to attack once again. So this is it for today's video, I hope I kept it short. If you liked it, please consider supporting it with a like, comment and a subscription. As you know, not only these actions help promote this video to a wider audience, thus spreading the message, but also motivates me to work harder. Thank you in advance. As always, humanity calls me to condemn all violence against human beings. Have a good day and always remember, Russia will be free and great.